Well, ladies and gentlemen, if it seemed like as good of a time as any to bring out my alternate catchphrase, okie dokie, for Big T. Big T comes on my videos every couple of weeks, and he asks for okie dokie. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, okie dokie, it is time for your SmackDown review. So, I'm going to have to put the... Uh, catchphrase on hiatus, you know, my, my real one for uh, obvious reasons, which I can't state here as I put to the test in my last review. Um, so we started off with Shane McMahon hitting the ring, um, talking about the invasion of Raw. So we didn't get a good explanation last week. So this is take two. You know, we're going to have another explanation because they can't come up with a good reason of why SmackDown would invade Raw. So Shane says, you know, Raw was the superior show. You know, see, this is the problem. The reason why SmackDown is considered to be the B show is because they keep saying it. The, the, the company that actually puts out the product actually tells us that they are the B brand. You know, anything that came of any of the fans saying that is because they actually said it first. They've been saying that for the longest time, ever since they did the bragging rights pay-per-views and whenever else they've done SmackDown versus Raw. That's that's the first thing that they'll mention is SmackDown is the B-show. And it never used to be that way. The, the only reason that SmackDown is more relevant now is because there's wrestlers that don't appear on Raw. But back when they started up SmackDown, and during the first draft, SmackDown was, you know, you, you had to watch it. Um, you know, now, I, I don't know. You know, when I do the comparison, I feel like Raw is a bit more eventful than SmackDown, but I can't really say it's a better show. Some people make the argument that SmackDown is the uh, shorter show, which makes it better. That's a lazy argument. That's not really anything in terms of quality. A shorter show, you know, is always better. You know, for a wrestling show, it is overkill. It, it is crazy to think that any show that goes more than an hour, it, you know, of course it's wrestling. It's not professional sports, you know. Most baseball games and football games are three hours, and that it's not. So to ask people to sit down and watch a, a fake form of entertainment for three hours is asking too much. So I can see the argument, but that's not really like what's a better show, like what show has the better, which, which is more entertaining. You know, usually when people say what's a better show, they're, they're saying what's more entertaining to you. So, you know, Shane tries to justify it. You know, that they're trying to make a mark to say that SmackDown's not going to be considered the B-show. At the end of this promo, aren't we all still thinking that Raw... They say Raw is the flagship show. Right there, they don't even have to say it's the B-show. They've said that too, but all they have to do is just keep saying that Raw is the flagship show. And that's enough. That's enough for anybody to say, hey... You know what? Raw is probably the show they're paying more attention to. And that they do. So, anyway, we started off with Bobby Roode defeating Dolph Ziggler in a two out of three falls match. Um, you know, just out of curiosity, you know, okay, match and everything. Um, you know, Wade Keller is complaining it should be longer. You know, of course, this match should have been 30 minutes. But wh why not? Anyway, um, I go and I watch Raw Fall because I want to see Dolph Ziggler's whole character for weeks and weeks and weeks. You know, they, they were making like Ziggler was fed up. You know, he was doing all these sarcastic entrances and saying he was sick of everybody having a fancy entrance. So Ziggler doesn't even get a response on the main show. They, they put all that crap online. So, um, you know, you could watch it there and basically no one's going to watch it. But I was curious. I was more curious to see what Ziggler's reaction was going to be. Because, you know, they're building his character and everything. Or it seems like that he was trying the best he could with the material given. But what was going to be his reaction um, to losing this match after all this hoopla with Bobby Roode and everything? 
What what were they going to do here? They have Ziggler cuts a promo that's I don't know if this was just like, you know, on the fly or whatever, but Ziggler sounding defeated here. Some people said it sounded almost like he was going to quit. Oh, I've heard that rumor time and time again. That's probably one of the most circulated rumors here on the internet that uh, Ziggler is going to quit. He's said that time and time again. He's not going anywhere, but uh, I don't know. I couldn't help but feel that this promo was not only pathetic, but, but a little bit sad. Uh, he just sounded like a guy that just got beat, and he says, you know, that um, once getting a win over him used to mean something. The fact that he, like I said, that he's even in this spot acknowledging that is depressing to me. Whatever happened to protecting the talent? I think back to years ago, and you would never really see talent in this position in any way. You, you know, especially if you're going to put them in a prominent position that utilizes a lot of TV time, you know, like 15, 20 minutes, like what Dolph Ziggler has been involved in. You would treat them a little bit better. And this is a guy that's worn your world title. You, you've you given him numerous main events. And you're going to just have him get in front of a camera and act all defeated like that? I mean, this is pretty sad. It's pathetic. And this is probably one of the worst things I've seen with Ziggler since the guy getting, um, uh, getting punished for having a concussion. They blamed him for not working safe, even though they asked him to, um, you know, I think it was he got hit in the head with a ladder from Jack Swag or whatever it was. But I keep going back to that. And this is a guy that, you know, they keep on, you know, um, trying to do something with them. And, and, and it's not his fault because you even see how hard the guy tries despite being given this awful material. Like, really, how bad was that stuff that they gave him. They they made him go out there, mock all these entrances, and really, what was it all about? You know, just because Bobby Roode has a, you know, a big entrance, that was the excuse to have the feud. So, you know, and then he ends up losing it. And, they, and his reaction to it is like a, a loser. Not like a heel or anything, but a defeated loser that he didn't sound like a WWE superstar. Like this is like a guy belonging to a company that's the biggest in the world, the only game in town, and not only that, like I said, this is a guy that's won your world title, and you still can't figure out what to do with the guy. Despite all this, he was there. He was in the ring when Sting debuted for the WWE for the first time. You know, he was the sole survivor. They talked about that at Survivor Series. And now Bobby Roode's going to be there. Ziggler's not going to be in the match. And how do you really account for all this? How do you look at this? Like, three years ago, this guy was in a big match scenario. And then you fast forward, and then he's got, like, no spot on the card at all. <sighs> Anyway, backstage, you had Rusev with New Day. So the New Day is all dressed up. It, yes, it was funny seeing Xavier Woods in the Jimmy Hart outfit. Um, you know, it, it, Rusev came along and they, you know, he said, you know, how it's not Halloween, it's Rusev Day. I don't know how long they're going to keep this up with the Rusev Day thing. I mean, it's sort of entertaining that they're trying to give him some personality, but it's falling flat. There's so many. There's only so many times that this guy can come out of nowhere saying Rusev Day. I got to say, I, I do like the fact that he is with Aiden English. Aiden English is a guy, like I said, I don't buy him as a wrestler on the WWE main roster. But this is a guy that has personality, and yes... He could be his Jimmy Hart. This is a guy that should be a manager. And this is, you know, I, I think that this is a great fit. Keep him out of the ring. Maybe sometimes put him in there, you know, when Rusev needs a tag partner. But aside from that, I, I mean, this is perfect. Get You know, get him in there. You know, he's he has a look, Aiden English, sort of. Um, you know, and, and he's... 
he's funny. He adds a little bit of entertainment to Rusev, who is otherwise pretty dry. So I'm all for making him the manager. So Rusev took the candy away from Big E, and he's and he stomped on it. And Big E kept calling him a sucker and challenged him to a match. Uh, the segment was all right, I suppose. You know, they tried to show Rusev with a bit of personality. Um, they tried to be funny with New Day, but but again, I have to say this. Uh, let's add on to this with Rusev. How long can they keep doing this? How long can they keep on going with the New Day shtick already? Yes, it's funny they're dressed up in costumes, but you know this idea of grown men acting like children. And this is what I'm saying. I'm looking at Big E, and I'm looking him against Rusev, and I'm like. You know, this he could be a tough guy. He could be a you know a monster if they wanted to make him that way. But the thing is, um, you know, he's just he's relegate. They don't view it as relegating him to this role. I mean, they've sold a lot of merchandise. I mean, they're popular with the crowd. But I mean, how long are they going to keep this up? I mean, it is obvious that that crowd that they have that's the only f true fans they have left. They buy into that crap, but I mean, everybody else, I mean, the New Day is not getting any new viewers. So how are we going to keep on going with the same shtick? We're going to have this going for three years now. It's getting a, a bit redundant, to say the least, because it really is, you know, we haven't seen Xavier Woods dressing up as Jimmy Hart yet, but they've dressed up as other stuff. I mean... How long can you keep the same type of thing going, is what I'm trying to say. Um, also backstage, you had Becky Lynch trying to rally the troops, you know, the other women. Um, Natalia came at, you know, and started uh, uh, saying to Charlotte that if they fail, um, it's going to make, you know, the women's division look bad and she's going to blame Charlotte. And the thing is, it, Becky Lynch is the team captain, so why is she blaming it on Charlotte? I kind of wasn't getting the logic here. If Isn't it if Becky fails because she's the team captain, she's leading them? If they wanted to have it the other way, then they should have had Charlotte win the match last week. Or was she in the match? Or, I don't even remember. But they should have put her in the match if she wasn't. If that's the way how they were going to go, it's almost like Natalia didn't even know who won the match or that Becky Lynch was the um, was the team captain. It was just a little bit odd. I mean, you want to, uh, you know, cut that promo on Charlotte, but uh, there wasn't really a lot of sense being made there. Also, seeing Ellsworth, you know, dressed up as a dog, I have to say, I'm starting to get a little bit uncomfortable with this. I thought that the... The leash at first was funny, but last week with the soiled underwear, and now we're going ahead and dressing him up as a dog. And this is going a little bit too far, to say the least. Not like that, but it's just it's it's a little bit moronic. Uh, it's a little bit sad and pathetic to see that. It's not really adding anything to the show. And it's making the guy look really, really bad. Not to say that, you know, this guy really has a lot going for him, Ellsworth. But seeing him like this, I kind of really felt bad for the guy. I, I mean, whatever gets the guy a paycheck. But, my God, I mean, like, if this guy's got kids and they're seeing him like that, I'm just saying it, it's it's not a good look. Um, Sing Kara going to a, either he got disqualified or went to a no contest with Baron Corbin. I'm looking at this match and I just cannot believe that in, what is it, in like two weeks, they're going to try to sell us an intercontinental title match versus, I mean, the intercontinental versus U.S. champion match, champion versus champion, Miz versus Corbin. Miz beats Matt Hardy. He's beating everybody. He's one of the longest running IC champs in quite some time. And now we've got Baron Corbin three weeks in the row. Can't beat Sin Cara. Maybe he beat him by DQ this week. I think it was a no contest, but whatever it may be, 
what are they doing here? It should have been the other way around. Sin Cara is tackling him, punching him, and then Baron Corbin runs away from Sin Cara. He's like a full foot taller than this guy. He outweighs him by like 100 pounds. And we're supposed to sit here and actually, you know, have uh, like no reaction to this segment. We're supposed to think that this is good or even decent. How are you selling a chip? I mean, I don't care what it is. They have the whole NFL concussion scandal going on. Corbin was tweeting things um, to fans, and they want to punish this guy. I mean, like, enough is enough. How are you going to embarrass this guy as much as you're doing? I mean, this is what the office wants to do, obviously. You know, uh, Corbin effed up, and now they're going to have him, you know, look like a fool on TV, you know, get, getting beat up by a guy that hadn't even been there in months. The same guy who was in the ring taking John Cena to the limit is getting beat up by Sin Cara, a guy who hasn't had a pay-per-view match in like three years. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this as like, they have a pay-per-view that they're going to put on, and they want you to take this seriously, that this is going to be a, a, a rousing match between The Miz and Corbin. Like, these are equal champions. I mean, they have beaten these guys into the ground. Uh, I mean, they've been protect. You've noticed they've been protecting certain champions, but not others. Like they were, they they were not protecting Jinder, but they protect Brock. They're protecting the Usos. They've been keeping them out of the ring, but but making sure that the Shield have been getting beat by Kane and stuff. I mean, like there's, you know, what happened? Aren't they the fifty fifty bookers now? All of a sudden, up. Oh, we're not protecting everybody. Everybody is just, you know, it doesn't matter. We're just going to have this pay-per-view regardless, and everyone's just going to look like losers going into it. I don't understand the, the game plan going into this. Like, we're having champion versus champion match, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, Miz is in the, the main event of the pay-per-view um, last month, and Corbin is getting his, getting his ass beat by Sin Cara. Shelton Benjamin and uh, Chad Gable were mocking the Usos during their promo. Uh, you know, an attempted personality, but this was a little bit cheesy by Chad Gable. I just have to say, you know, we're praising it, and I agree with Wade Keller. You know, there was personality being shown here, but Chad Gable, after he comes out of this, I don't think anybody was saying that was a cool rap. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, it was kind of lame. And to have the Usos kind of just staying there, not saying anything during that, I mean, it was like they should have just said, get the hell out of here, you suck. I mean, that would have been the realistic human reaction to what I was watching here. Uh, I mean, you have this guy kind of acting like a dweeb. Let's just go ahead and say it. Really was kind of nerdy and dweebish by Gable in this segment. Just the Usos are just standing there, kind of taking it. I mean, they're taking it, taking what exactly? It's not like it's really that much of an insult. Um, AJ Styles beat one of the Singh brothers like in under a minute. We knew that was going to happen. Um, Jinder beats up AJ. He had a little promo by Jinder prior to the match, you know, nothing special. I'm just saying that, you know, you want to, uh, what's going on here, like AJ just, you know, beating up um, the, the, the two henchmen of gender, uh, based compared to what Brock Lesnar has done the past couple of months, I mean, you got Heyman burying him, you know, they've already made like a, a mockery out of gender, like ever since they did that Punjabi prison match, okay, they, they came back and they kind of, had him beat Naka Murphy fair and square. I, I get it. But, uh, you know, just like I said, once again, the comparison in these champion versus champion matches. Maybe not as bad as Corbin and Miz, but there's a pretty big distinction here. I don't know how wise it was to have this champion versus champion match. Like, I'm interested 
and seeing it. It's just the comparison here. The way that they built both guys are dramatically different. Um, Rusev defeated Big E, kicked him in the back of the head. Um, the match was over. You know, okay, Rusev finally getting a win here. Uh, I, I can't help but looking at the match and just saying to myself, Big E is just being wasted here. You have a big guy. You have a guy that could possibly be intimidating. They tried to do that. They paired him up with Ziggler in the beginning. Um, you know, I get it. You know, Big E is not the tallest, but, you know, the guy is huge. He's jacked, you know. He's, a, you know, a big power lifter. And just to have him in here every single week acting like a total goofball, when is he going to just turn around and they're, and they're just going to have him smack the crap out of New Day already? I, I mean, it, it, it's... It's going to maybe eventually happen, but it's a little bit delayed, to say the least. I mean, they're not really doing anything. They're not going anywhere. They lost the few with the Usos. They did that lame-ass uh, truce thing. And I don't, I don't know where they're going from here. The past couple of weeks, it's not like they're really doing anything special with New Day. So... Why not just end this crap already? It's like enough for it. We've seen all we can see. We've seen the trombone a thousand times. We've seen the colorful costumes a thousand times. We've seen the dildos on the heads a thousand times. Enough is enough already with this team. Each and every week, it's the same shtick, basically. You know, just with different alterations. Uh, Rusev was backstage again. Um, you, you had uh, him talking to Aiden English and him were talking to Shane. Shane told him that if he could, um, if he could, uh, who do you, who's he going to have the match with again? Uh, I, I, you know, I can't even remember. He was going to have a match next week. And if he beats that person, he's going to be on the team. I, 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 was it Randy Orton or something? I don't even remember. I think it might have been Orton. Um, so if he beats him, he's going to be on the team. Uh, you could see that my interest was starting to dwindle in this show. I, I, I think he did say Orton. I don't even really remember, quite frankly. Uh, we had the Bre Breeze Dango segment. Uh, you know, once again, this is getting a bit tiring. We start off with um, Fandango putting an Eggo waffle or an Uggo waffle near a table. He thinks that it's Breeze underneath the table, but it's not. It's actually Ty Dillinger in drag. <laughs> Ty comes out. He takes the waffles. Uh, he, one of the Ascension comes in, Connor, wearing the um, a cane costume. Then they do a little... The lights go out, it look, uh, and, and the light shines on the Bludgeon Brothers. Okay, the Bludgeon Brothers also had a little vignette earlier in the night. Same stuff that we've been seeing week after week. The lights come back uh, on, and it's a little video of a guy that looks like Jig Jigsaw. I, I'm just kind of getting tired of this stuff. I gave them points for creativity for a couple of months now, but now this stuff is not leading anywhere. It's just nonsense, and it's just getting annoying already. And, and seeing Ty Dillinger, all these people, oh, the perfect 10, 10, 10, all these people holding up their fingers like morons to all the smarks out there. How did it feel to see Ty Dillinger, your hero, your savior, your NXT, you know, uh, man crush, dressed in drag for all for the world to see? That kind of just shows you right there what McMahon thinks of Ty Dillinger. The man dressed with the blonde wig in the dress. And that that is Ty Dillinger. And when we look back on the career of Ty Dillinger, I don't think we're going to be seeing him in U.S. title matches. We're going to remember Ty as the guy hiding underneath the table eating waffles in drag. That is Ty Dillinger's WWE career in a nutshell, folks. 
And in the main event, it was Naka Murphy defeating Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn tried to interfere. Orton uh, gave him a belly to back on the table. Naka Murphy hit the Shinaska or whatever the hell that move is called. Who the hell is supposed to pronounce that the name of that move properly? I swear to God, can anybody really say the name of that move right? Yes, I know a couple of people spelt it out for me in the comments, but I mean, really, legitimately, can anybody besides that lame-ass Corey Graves, are they able to say the name of that move correctly? I mean, my God, why would you call a move that, and it is not even pronounceable by most uh, American lips? I mean, it's just, by... My lips cannot form those words. It's not possible. It's not humanly possible to say the name of that move. Um, and the other thing is, like, ever since Owens and Zayn teamed up, they've been losing one match after another. So they teamed these guys up. Uh, you had Zayn hitching his wagon to Kevin Owens' star, and he's been losing every step of the way. Uh, really great, I guess. But that was a smart move. You know, he get he gets mixed up with Kevin Owens, and now they're losing all of a sudden. No, after that big Hell in the Cell match, they make us watch 50 minutes of a never-ending match, and now we're just gonna see Kevin Owens and Zayn losing and losing. I mean, like, really, what is the point? You're gonna do all these big change-ups. You're gonna make Zayn buddy buddy with Kevin Owens. And then make him a loser for for months on end. What you know? I, I I look at this card tonight and I see flaw after flaw, opportunity after uh, missed opportunity, boredom after boredom, just bland match after bland match. There was nothing good about this show at all. Uh, you know, you're gonna say what is the better show? I, I who cares even? Both were terrible. Three hours, two hours, one hours, four hours, 30 minutes. It wouldn't even matter. This is just bad material all around. And I'm supposed to be entertained by seeing Ty Dillinger in a dress eating waffles. It, this is like some weird-ass uh, Saturday morning cartoon that's not even good enough for children, not even good enough for retards. I mean, this is a show made for people that, you know, even people with half a brain, even people with a lobotomy would even find this show to be bad. Or, you know, people with a lobotomy would actually have it, a, 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 could give you a, a suitable opinion on this show. They'd even tell you it was bad. You know, seeing the trick or street fight. Seeing the Breeze Dongo segment, my head is beginning to hurt just thinking about those two terrible segments. Anyway, okie dokie. Man, I wish, you know, i got to go back to my old thing. I, I, I don't know, guys. I don't know how much I can say okie dokie. And I don't know how much I can keep holding back on certain words. You know, I don't know what words I'm allowed to say here on YouTube anymore. Am I allowed? I said ass a few times. You know, I tried to stay away from the F-bomb. I don't think I said it once in this video, and if I did, I really let it slip out. Didn't say the S-word. Didn't even say the B-word. I said the B-word in my Raw review, which probably screwed me over. Whatever. I, I, you know, I don't even know what to do anymore in these reviews. I'm not even allowed to talk the way that I talk. Uh, you know... That, that's what it's becoming. Anyway, it's been your YWC champ signing out.